Disney's D23 Expo is off to a fantastic start with plenty of great announcements coming out of the Disney Plus panel. Most excitingly, a number of trailers were dropped for exclusive original films and series that are scheduled to be available to stream on the service's launch day. Instead of spamming you guys with a string of individual videos reacting to or reviewing these trailers, I thought I'd combine them all and give my thoughts on these Disney Plus offerings and share my impressions of Disney Plus's original content overall so far. First up, we'll take a look at Star Wars The Mandalorian. This is of course the first ever live action Star Wars series coming from the mind of genius filmmaker Jon Favreau. Bob Iger and the team at Lucasfilm have been aggressively pushing the fact that the Disney Plus TV series are going to be produced to a very high movie-like quality and this is the first kind of visual evidence of that. Mandalorian looks beautifully shot with a cinematic feel, production values do look absolutely fantastic here and I love the combination of CG and practical effects which make it feel right at home with the original trilogy and more recent fare like Rogue One. There is still something here that's screaming TV to me and I'm not too sure what it is. Perhaps it's the smaller scope, it almost feels like a bottle series where everything's taking place in smaller locations with smaller stakes utilizing more grounded filmmaking techniques. My guess is budgeting restrictions means we have smaller sets and while the effects do look fantastic here there's probably going to be a less polished look to them. I mean even though the series has been rumored to have been produced on a hundred million dollar budget this is an eight hour series produced at only about the third of the budget of one of the two hour films so of course there's going to be some scaling and restrictions somewhere but I think that's kind of okay. This is a smaller more intimate more grounded Star Wars tale and I think the smaller scale of the production lends itself well to the kind of storytelling it'll be harnessing. It gives it that real B-movie spaghetti western feel and I think it'll work perfectly and very likely that's why they chose something like this for the small screen. So it may be a little harsh to try and expect it to live up to the quality of the films when we're already getting something that looks just so great. But this is new Star Wars and new Favreau and I'm all here for it. Next up it's Lady and the Tramp. This is perhaps the film I've been most intrigued about here. You all know that I enjoy the vast majority of Disney's live action remakes but this is one I've been a little bit concerned about. Not only is Lady and the Tramp probably one of the more underappreciated classics, it's not one I ever really envisioned in live action. But I guess nothing is off the table for Disney these days. I really love the tone and feel of this and I think it really captures the essence of the original film. It looks sweet and charming and beautifully shot but for me that's about where it ends. My least favourite kind of animal movie are the ones where they film real animals then put CG lips over the top of them and overdub them with a human voice and with this one my worst nightmare is confirmed. It seems that's exactly what they've done here and I'm getting some real serious uncanny valley vibes. I think my biggest problem here is that it seems in some sequences the animals are played by real animals without any CGI at all. Some sequences they're real animals with a bit of CGI and other sequences they are just totally CGI animals and it just seems so... I don't know if sloppy is the right word, maybe erratic, inconsistent. Look I am all for an animal movie with real animals if it's done well. Like I always felt that the original 101 Dalmatians handled the animal aspect perfectly even if it wasn't a really great film. I'm also all up for animal movies with totally CG photorealistic animals like The Lion King or The Jungle Book but when you're combining the two into one it just feels a little bit off. Look I'm gonna give this a shot most likely on or close to launch date and I just hope they pull this off okay. Next is Noel, the first original movie to drop on Disney Plus based on an original story. This one went into production back in 2017 and was actually originally intended for a theatrical release this November. However, Disney of course delegated the release to a Disney Plus exclusive in the end. I said on an earlier video that they've either done this because A, they have a lot of faith in the movie and think it can exemplify the kind of quality we can expect from Disney Plus or B, they have no faith in the movie and are simply dumping it on the service to avoid a box office disaster. Judging by the trailer, look this doesn't look like the best movie out there and yeah probably one that wouldn't have done overly well at the box office, certainly not a billion dollar effort but it actually looks fairly good. It looks like it could be a lot of fun and seems to have a lot of charm. I'm all for a corny Christmas movie with a lot of heart and this looks like it could be right up my alley. I like Anna Kendrick and Bill Hader and they seem to be working pretty 
pretty well in this. I like that it has a theatrical feel and not a TV movie feel, but again, this was intended to be a theatrical movie released to cinemas, so I think it's probably going to be a little unfair to judge the long-term quality of the Disney Plus films on this one. But yeah, look, this looks like fun and one I'm looking forward to checking out this holiday season. We also got our first look at High School Musical The Musical, the series. Never been big into High School Musical or Disney Channel stuff, never something that overly really interested me, so I'm probably not in the right demographic for this to really judge, but from initial thoughts, this actually looks okay. I really like the premise here, a group of high school students putting on a musical stage production of the original High School Musical film, done in a meta-mockumentary way. It's pretty original and I think a good way for Disney to reboot High School Musical and retain all the classic songs without necessarily, well, rebooting or remaking the originals, despite how diehard fans may actually feel about it. Look, I'll be completely honest, if this show went to Disney Channel, it's not anything that I'd ever really consider watching, so the fact that it's going to Disney Plus probably shouldn't really sway my decision with it, but you know what, it kind of is a little bit, you know, just out of curiosity, I'll probably check out one or two episodes again just to kind of get a feel of the kind of original programming we can expect from Disney Plus and who knows I might actually end up enjoying it in the end but probably not again it doesn't really look like my thing but for its demographic it looks like it might be okay. We also got a couple of trailers for unscripted series starting with The World According to Jeff Goldblum and wow this is just this is just everything I was expecting and more this is this is life. I am a big viewer of natural history docos and travel shows, and I especially love shows where comedians or performers are thrown out of their depths and into weird, quirky locales and situations. Think Idiot Abroad, Travels with My Father with Jack Whitehall, Billy Connolly's travel shows, or any of the Top Gear specials. And man, does this show look good. I mean, who doesn't love the unbridled wisdom of the one and only Jeff Goldblum? And this just totally looks weird, wacky, eccentric, crazy, and a whole lot of unique fun. I'm all for this show and hoping it can turn out to be a favourite of the kind. Then we have Disney docu-series One Day at Disney. I produced a video where I went in depth with this so I'll keep this one short. Basically this is a series of 52 short form episodes of around 4-7 to seven minutes as well as a feature length pilot episode which focuses on artists, innovators and cast members working in the various factions and subsidiaries of the Disney company. Yeah look this seems like a bit of a self-congratulatory pat on the back on Disney's behalf. Look how great it is here and how great we are. But I'm really digging it, I won't lie. I am truly fascinated by the cogs that keep the House of Mouse spinning 24-7 and can't wait to get a look into the more obscure and often untalked about and uncovered areas of the company. And going by this trailer, it's going to be incredibly eye-opening and again a lot of fun. And finally, there's Encore. This one is hosted by Kristen Bell and focuses on reuniting middle-aged classmates to perform one of their old high school musicals. Again, this is the kind of show I probably wouldn't be interested in watching if it was on any other platform and in fact I think it's actually based on an ABC special produced a number of years ago that I haven't seen. Look, again, it looks okay, but again it's really not my kind of thing I don't think. I like the premise and it looks life affirming and joyful and full of heart, but I often find this kind of show a little sappy and just too melodramatic for my taste. It is something that I'm open to checking out, but again, I'm not sure it's something that I'll enjoy for more than maybe a couple of episodes. But the great thing here is that at least there's a little something for everyone. And isn't that just what's so great about Disney Plus? There really is something here for everyone to enjoy. And while I am excited about some projects and a little underwhelmed by others, there's a completely different audience that will be underwhelmed by what I'm excited about and excited about what I am underwhelmed with. And in the end, I, I kind of think that that's all that really matters with this platform. It looks like it's going to have such a large reach. Disney certainly seems to be putting their money where their mouth is with this platform so far. The quality seems absolutely top notch or as close to top notch as you can get without a blockbuster budget. But again, how much of this quality is purely for show or because a lot of the stuff was originally planned for a theatrical release or for another platform to begin with remains to be seen. And I think the true indicator of the quality of the Disney Plus originals will only probably be able to be judged after a couple of years. But for now, 
I'm definitely in. Sign me up for that three year contract. But how about you guys out there? How are you feeling about Disney Plus's preview so far? What are you liking the most? What are you disliking the most? Have these trailers been enough to push you into the Disney Plus club? Fire away in the comments below and let me know your thoughts. I will of course be covering all the happenings at D23 this weekend, so make sure you are subscribed to my channel for all the big news and announcements as they happen. If this is your first time viewing one of my videos and you'd like to see more like it in the future, then please don't forget to hit that big old subscribe button up on your screen, as well as that like button down below for that little extra support. Also, don't forget to check me out on social media, and please consider supporting me over on Patreon. Thanks for watching, and have a fantastic day.